Hey guys, welcome to Imminent Threat Solutions. Today we're going to be taking a look at three different kinds of knots that you can tie on our Knot of the Week series um, to replace your paracord pole. So if you've ever had a backpack that does one of those things and jingles around, uh, today we're going to show you how you can tie some different stuff to replace those with paracord. So let's get right into it. Okay guys, as I mentioned, there's three different ways of tying these paracord poles. One is uh, shown here on our ETA trauma kit. This is the Fat Boy, um, and this is how they come um, when you get them from us. So this is a, just a standard overhand knot, as you can see on the end of these zipper poles. Um, then you have basically the heat shrink tubing option where you have a longer pole, and then the middle is, has heat shrink tubing, which we're, are, we are going to show here too. Um, and I feel that GORUCK kind of made this popular, um, and that's kind of the, the real way that I've, or the first way that I really saw it become kind of popular is uh, through the way GORUCK does it on their packs. And then the third way is to tie a lanyard knot, which gives you kind of a heftier end um, to pull with. So any three of those options are great, and just keep in mind that any of these can be used with gutted paracord, so everything we're going to show today has the guts still in the paracord, which are the inner strands, but you can always remove those, which makes for a, a thinner pole, um, and you know, it, does, it becomes less bulky, like especially on the lanyard knot when you get into uh, to tying that with gutted paracord, but again, everything we're going to show here has got the guts in it. So I've got some heat shrink tubing. We're going to show that actually being done here. Um, you're going to need a, a pair of dikes or diagonal cutters, which is what that stands for, um, to snip off any kind of zippers that may be dangling and things like that. Um, the one thing to keep in mind is some zippers that have um, pulls on them that make noise like this also kind of have a, uh, I know YKK makes them, which is the Primo brand of zipper that's out there, but there's actually a little limiter in there that actually kind of keeps this from moving around too much inside of that zipper channel or the hole that's in the zipper where the paracord is going to go through, and you may have issues kind of threading that through. That's just something to keep in mind. Just kind of take a look at the, the zipper pull you're actually cutting off first and make sure there's room to put the paracord through. You can also use dummy cord if you have a smaller zipper too. You don't have to use, you know, full, uh, basically 550 cord like this is. So we've got three different lengths we're going to be working with today too. We've got the 10 inch length that we're going to be tying for just the standard overhand knot. Um, we've got a 12 inch length that we're going to be using uh, along with a two inch cut of uh, heat shrink tubing and then a 20 inch cut that we'll be using for the lanyard knot. Um, I recommend those length just because like especially with the lanyard knot you're going to need more length in there to to get the knot correct um, especially with the way uh, we're going to show tying it. Um, as you get better with the lanyard knot and things like that you can start using a shorter piece of paracord. So anyhow let's get into this. Um, what I want to do first is just I'm going to move this out of the way here I'm going to go ahead and snip off this zipper with those diagonal cutters. So all you have to do is just make a cut in the, uh, in the zipper there. You just usually need one and you can kind of twist it. Most zippers are cheap enough to where, or sorry, flexible enough to where that's going to break um, by just bending it. So remove that. Now you're left with that, the gap in the zipper there. And we'll just do the overhand knot method first. I'm just going to slide this piece of paracord in here. Um, keep in mind when you fuse the ends of your paracord too, um, I've just gotten accustomed to using my fingers to, when I'm fusing, just kind of pressing that down. Um, the heat doesn't really bug me anymore. I've been doing it for so long, but um, that will allow you to get a better uh, press through on that zipper. And I'm just going to refuse this because I did not do this one well enough. So you can kind of actually form a little tip on it too, and that's kind of what I do when I fuse. So that's going to go in there nice and easy. And then you're just going to thread that through and just do a simple overhand knot. Now overhand knots are pretty simple, but just keep in mind that there is a way to kind of mess these up. If, you're, if your lines aren't lying nice and straight and you go to pull on this, you can get kind of an overlap and they won't, they won't sit as nice. So 
basically the way I, the reason I suggest using a 10 inch section is that you can really kind of pick and choose how length how long you want the length of pull on this so then you know at the end you can come along and snip off the excess and then fuse the end of that too again you can use a lighter or your finger or what have you to just fuse that up so now that's one method of pull. So let's also demonstrate next the, the heat shrink tubing. So we'll come to these other zippers here. And this is just a cheap Jansport pack I picked up for the sake of demonstration here. Because honestly, I started looking around and <laughs> most everything I have already has these on it. So I couldn't really demonstrate cutting the, the jingle jangles off the zippers there. All right, so we're now going to go to um, the 12 inch piece for the heat shrink tubing. All right, so we got that threaded through now. All right, so now that we have the piece threaded through, take your piece of heat shrink tubing. You're just going to take these in here. Just kind of press through here. And this is a quarter inch heat shrink tubing, just FYI. Okay, once you get your heat shrink tubing pulled through, you want to basically just bring that to the end where that zipper pull of meets at. Because um, you want this as close as possible, you're still going to get movement in here, but as the heat shrink tubing basically firms up when the heat's applied, um, you want the knot and the heat shrink tubing to be as close to the zipper as possible. So again, we're just going to tie an overhand knot in the end of this. And I use 12 inch pieces for this, but you may want to get them a little longer just to make sure you have enough slack here. Just trying to get this as close as possible to the end of the heat shrink tubing. All right, so now we'll use our heat gun here. You want to apply heat to uh, try to get both sides of the heat shrink tubing and just kind of everywhere there. No real secret to it. All right, so now that we've got that there, so that's now heated and shrunk down a little bit, and we're just going to trim off the ends here. Go ahead and fuse that together. And that's our second method. So there's your, your heat shrink tubing zipper pull. And the third method is the lanyard knot, and that is a little more intense here because I'm actually have to demonstrate this knot. Um, and there's actually a video previously on ITS that uh, shows a demonstration of the lanyard knot being tied, but I've actually found a little bit better way to tie it since then. That was a couple of years ago we did that on video. So um, I want to show this method of tying the lanyard knot because I think it's going to be a little easier for you guys to tie if you're not already familiar with that. So what I like to do is take a kind of the reverse cue approach, which is how I start um, a bow line, and that's how I pronounce it. So deal with it. Um, so that's a reverse cue is what I call that. It's basically where the tail or the um, working end comes across 
the top of the line and then I actually flip it. So I know that sounds maybe a little confusing, but it works for me. So what I'm going to do is now take that loop and lay it across my hand and the other end, or now, which now becomes the working end, is actually going to cross underneath that cue. So as it crosses underneath the cue, like that, you're going to get that shape here. And now this working end is going to come around the standing part, which that first tail becomes the standing part. Um, and it's going to actually go within, or up and under, that piece that was being shown inside of that loop. So using this fit here, I'll demonstrate, it's actually going to come like that. So that's what you're going to wind up with. So now at the end of this, what you're going to have is essentially a Carrick bend. Um, and you'll, you'll have a definite top and bottom. And what I'm going to do is actually clean this up a little bit to where the basically what are now both working ends are going to be a little bit cleaner. So that's what you're going to wind up with now. So from here, you're going to take um, the top, which if you look at it like this, that top working end is actually going to come around and come through that middle. So the middle almost makes a diamond. And that middle is going to come back around. So this is now your standing part here that's coming down there. It's going to come around and back through. And this is going to do the same thing. I'm going to flip this around. It's going to come around that standing part and back through the middle. And you're just going to pull like this. Obviously, this needs to be cleaned up a little. But that's how to make a lanyard knot. So let's actually tie this on the backpack here. And uh, I'll go through it here. Snip that one off. Okay, so it's a reverse cue. Move that across the top. Come around. Underneath and down. Creating our Carrick bend. And now what I'm going to do once I have the Carrick on here is I'm actually going to tighten this up a little bit. So I'm going to just kind of retrace this almost because I want to uh, to get that to a decent length. And you can experiment here with you know what kind of length you like on these at this point too because this will give you a rough idea of of how long that's going to be while it's on there. So now again, as I demonstrated before, you have two working ends. The first working end is going to come around. It's going to wrap around this standing part and come through the middle of that diamond from the bottom. Just like that. Same thing with this one. It's going to come around that standing part and that diamond is where this one's coming from now. So they both come through the diamond and you're going to just tighten that up. bit extra slack here. I'm just going to kind of clean that up there. So that might be a little bit longer than you like, but um, you can always adjust this. And honestly, from here too, you can find where this is coming from. So I can trace this back like this. So here's, that's now the point that this is coming through. Pull this a little so you can see. So I can actually shorten it up by doing that. And then I'm just going to retrace this side like this and that's an easy way to shorten it up too just to show you that
So then you really want to just kind of continue tracing that around, cleaning it up a little, tightening it up, so on and so forth. Um, you can get that as kind of as tight as you want it to be. And then once you've got that again, this is a little loose for how I'd probably have it, but for the sake of the video, we'll just move on and clean this up here. All right, so now that is the, the lanyard knot zipper pull. So now we, again, just to rehash, we've got just the overhand knot, the lanyard knot, and we've got the heat shrink tubing overhand knot, essentially, is what that is. So those are your three different kinds of options um, that we wanted to present today on the Knot of the Week. And hope you enjoyed it. Let us know if you have any questions in the comments. Um, again, this is also going to supplement an article on ITS where we'll have some detailed photos and a write-up to accompany this. So if there's something you might not have seen clearly, make sure you check out that article on ITSTactical.com. Thanks for watching.